Yeah, so my name is Brett Velikovich. I'm the founder and CEO of Expert Drones. So Expert Drones creates live event experiences using drone technology. So we work with a variety of different uh, industries to give drones a voice in different spaces. And so primarily what we've been doing recently is just creating these custom one-of-a-kind experiences for companies that want to somehow integrate drone technology into their portfolio. Yeah, so what we're doing now with uh, W Hotels is we're, we've created a drone racing experience called the Drone Dash. And so that's what we're doing here at the Fort Lauderdale uh, property to basically highlight uh, the, the entire new renovation. Uh, and essentially, we've taken our drone racing pilots that are professional racers that go around the country uh, competing uh, in, in competitions and taking these drones and racing them around the hotel to give people just a, a new creative experience. Yeah, so my background in drones really comes from the military. So I, I used to work with a lot of the more military government, big big drones that were used overseas for counterterrorism operations. And I started to see that same technology. It used to be very restricted, you know, very top secret, classified type technology start slowly trickling into the private sector. And so. Uh, some of the same tech that I used before in that space is now being used for everyday commercial operations, inspections, and uh, carrying and delivering payloads, doing aerial photography. And so I saw that transition and now uh, the fact that drones are so easy to use and so uh, applicable to helping uh, people with their jobs and making, making their jobs uh, more efficient. Uh, then I just essentially said, you know, I want to start working with them and figure out interesting ways we can use them use them for a variety of different reasons, even in uh, the humanitarian space as well. We've done just a, a lot of really interesting things. Uh, I think uh, recently one of the more creative uh, things we did was we actually created a drones that can mix uh, cocktail drinks and shake them and even deliver drinks to people's tables. And that was one of the more interesting things we've done recently. We've also um, taken drones and hung banners from them to create mobile billboards and flown them around at office parks to highlight uh, companies' uh, information. We've also done uh, things like dropped potato chips from the air uh, over crowds so that they could, uh, you know, kind of receive uh, some interesting things that float down to them and just it's all about the wow factor with drones. I mean, they, they give people a, a different view, they give folks a different experience than they've ever seen before. It's not necessarily more efficient for a drone to be shaking drinks uh, you know, rather than a bartender doing it, but at the same time, it's just entertaining. You don't, you, go to, you don't go to a bar every day and see drones flying around and being part of that experience, but that's how the technology's moving. I would say it's a toss-up between probably LA uh, or uh, Africa, East Africa. Uh, I, I think, very different places. Yeah, East Africa for me is fun because it's so open, it's so remote. You're the only one out there. You can fly for miles. There's nothing really blocking you. And in uh, the in the U.S., there's a lot of different laws that you have to um, adhere to. One of the things that our company does is we help we help other organizations understand like how to be compliant with uh, different regulations with drones. And so. You, know, you you have to. There's only so many places you can fly them and be approved to fly them, and, and but when you're overseas, a, a lot of those rules don't apply. So you just have just a, a ton of space, and you can do a lot more, uh, a lot more things out there. So every single country right now, they have. Uh, different rules when it comes to drone technology. The U.S. is the most restrictive. So if you adhere to the simple rules in the U.S., um, for the most part, you'll be okay traveling overseas. We've traveled everywhere. We've gone to Dubai, we've gone to Thailand, uh, obviously into Africa, and for the most part, we've never had any issues um, with uh, anyone saying you can't bring this in here. Now, there, there are a few countries that do restrict drone use for, for instance, Saudi Arabia is one where if you go into the country with a drone, uh, they may confiscate it at the airport. But for the most part, um, a lot of these um, officials, these custom officials are now becoming more uh, acclimatized to drones when at first they thought they thought they were machines that were used for spying and they didn't realize that people just want to go and take really nice photos of their travel experiences and so uh, now there really isn't too many, too many restrictions uh, for you going overseas so the best thing to do is to literally just do a search for drone laws of that country and you'll you'll quickly pop up with a variety of different information on that So when, when it comes to drone technology, uh, you really have to be careful um, about the things that you're filming. Not because it's necessarily illegal, it's just that you do not want to create um, the, uh, a notion that you're, look, 
you're spying on, on people or you're looking into their rooms or uh, because that that does give the industry a bad rap but it's such a small percentage of people that are doing bad things most people are, are really using them for just some incredible uh, entertaining uh, experiences but at the same time you just want to make sure that uh, I, I like to attribute it to like a little bit like the skateboarding industry it's not it's not illegal you just have to be careful you don't know if somebody's going to tell you to stop filming uh, so you just have to uh, be cautious when you're when you're flying around people and uh, there are also height limits you never want to fly too high because then you get into a different uh, class of airspace so these drones are very powerful I mean these things can fly thousands of feet in the air they can fly miles away from the remote they can live stream that video back to uh, your tablet um, from miles away and so uh, once you start flying beyond line of sight that's where it can get a little sketchy with uh, you not necessarily knowing where the drone is, is located and, and not knowing not having full control over it. I, just last week, someone just got arrested for flying uh, over an NFL stadium and using a drone to drop leaflets over the crowd. And a lot of these NFL stadiums now are getting technology to counter that, that drone. So they literally have devices that can detect them and detect who's flying them. And so they're creating these safety mechanisms for it. But that was, that was pretty dumb. But I've seen everything from people putting guns on drones to chainsaws and going around and ch chopping trees to uh, you'd be surprised at some of the things that have been outfitted on drones these days. Uh, I think it was Casey Nestat, the, one of the YouTube influencers. He had taken a drone that was capable of carrying his body weight and he went skiing with it. So you have a, this incredible video of this massive customized drone that could carry a person. So every time he, he would be you know, going down the slopes, he would be hanging on to this drone and the drone would carry him and lift him in the air. And to me, I mean, that just shows the future of the technology that you can actually lift a person safely and have them land safely with a drone. Uh, so that, that video definitely comes to mind as one of the more creative. So nine out of 10 drones that are sold right now in the US are made by a company called DJI. They're a Chinese manufacturer. And the reason that most people buy those is because they're so easy to use. Um, they're just incredible drones. They, they can fly, again, miles away from the remote. They have great cameras, so 4K high definition. And they even have sense and avoid technology now. So you can actually fly it and it can move around obstacles. Or if you're flying it into a wall, it will literally stop you from going further. And so when you're looking for a drone, you want to make sure that it has a variety of different options like that for safety. Safety are always going to be the biggest thing. And then the other thing is the camera. So you want to have a, a gimbal on your camera. And what that is, is it's a, it's a stabilizer. So when that drone is, let's say, 400 feet in the air and it's windy and it's filming uh, what, what you know, something down below, you want to make sure that camera stabilizes. Otherwise, it's going to be shaky like you know you, you might be with, filming with your own phone. And so just at a minimum, you want a drone that has a, a gimbal on it so that your video comes out clear. It's, it's the wow factor. It's, it's being creative. It's innovation. It's every time I fly a drone around somebody who hasn't seen one, maybe they've only seen them on the news, you just see their eyes light up. You just see them go, wow, and they want to take controls of it, and they want to just get closer to it. And, and, and to me, that's the entertainment value in it, is, is, is that it's something that people don't regularly see. You hear about it, you think of it as this far sci-fi technology that, that we'll never see in our day and age, but it's here, it's, it's ready to be used. It's just a matter of more uh, organizations starting to embrace that and see uh, how the technology can be used to just create this uh, you know, immersive experience for their guests. I'm Brett Velikovich, and I'm a Marriott traveler.